Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about arterial line and the nursing responsibilities. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. Arterial line is otherwise called as art line, A line, intra arterial line. An arterial line is used to take continuous blood pressure readings and also called intra arterial pressure monitoring. Invasive blood pressure is a gold standard. It is an insertion of catheter into an artery to monitor the continuous blood pressure, that is, continuous measurement of systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure, and mean arterial pressure. And assessment of cardiovascular effects of vasoactive drugs like adrenaline, noradrenaline, dopamine, dobutamine, etc. And frequent ABG and laboratory sampling. Next, indications for arterial cannulation. Frequent titration of vasoactive drips, unstable blood pressures, frequent ABG or labs, unable to obtain non-invasive blood pressure and also indicated in case of certain cardiac surgeries. Looking into ABG sampling, frequent arterial blood gas analysis is indicated in patients with respiratory failure who are on ventilator and in cases with severe acid-based disturbances. In such cases, we have frequent orders to collect ABG samples. When there is an arterial line, it becomes easy and also painless to access for ABG sampling. Here comes sites for arterial cannulation. The common sites used for arterial cannulation are radial, brachial, and femoral. Radial artery has low complication rates compared with other sites. It is a superficial artery which aids insertion and also makes it compressible for hemostasis. The ulnar, brachial, axillary, dorsalis pedis, posterior tibial are alternatives. For an arterial line transducer setup, we need to have 500 ml normal saline, pressure bag, transducer kit, transducer holder, transducer pressure cable, PM line, IV drip set, syringe. We get PM line and IV drip set attached to the transducer set in few kits. If not, we may need to arrange the PM line and IV drip set. This is the image of a transducer. Now, this is the point where the arterial line is attached with the help of PM line. Next comes the stopcock. When you have a close look at the stopcock, there is a word written off. When we look at the direction in which it is turned in this image, it indicates that the stopcock is off to the atmospheric vent which means that the arterial line is open to the transducer. Next to stopcock is the transducer and next to transducer is the single-handed line flushing. Next comes the point where pressurized saline bag is attached. And the white line which goes is called the cable which is attached to the monitor. This is all about the parts of transducer kit. Before insertion of an arterial line, the transducer setup should be done. Let's look at the steps one by one. Perform hand hygiene and maintain aseptic technique. Open the transducer set and tighten all the connections. Hang the 500 ml saline in the pressure bag and spike it. Add heparin to it according to hospital policies and the reason behind is to make the line free from clots. Inflate the pressure bag to 300 mmHg and turn stopcock towards upward position to prevent leakage. The reason why we inflate the pressure bag to 300 mmHg is to prevent backflow from the cannula. Next, clamp IV tubing. Place the transducer holder on IV pole. Place transducer in transducer holder. Attach the IV tubing and the arterial pressure tubing in the transducer kit. 
unclamp the tubing and remove air from the tubing by activating the flush device. Point stop cock at the transducer horizontal and clamp the tubings. Now this is the setup. Transducer holder is attached to the IV stand and transducer is attached to the transducer holder. The upper part connects to the arterial line of the patient and the lower part connects to the pressurized saline bag. Once this setup is done, next will be zeroing the arterial transducer. Now how do we do this? Attach the transducer pressure cable to the monitor, a flat pressure wave should appear. And this is the image. Now stop cock should be leveled. Level the stop cock on the transducer to the phlebostatic axis of the patient which is the intersection of fourth intercostal space and mid axillary line. This phlebostatic axis acts as the reference point for zeroing the hemodynamic monitoring device. What is the reason for zeroing the arterial line? To ensure accuracy of reading, flush the line and turn the stopcock at the transducer upwards off to the patient but open to the atmosphere. This exerts pressure on transducer and the pressure is called zero. Turn the stopcock at the transducer upwards off to the patient. When you have a look at the second image, the stopcock is turned upwards which means the stopcock is off to the patient side. Remove the syringe or cap at the transducer and now the tubing is open to air. Next hit 0 on monitor then hit 0 ABP. Replace white cap with a blue cap or with a syringe. Turn stop cock a transducer horizontal that is off to atmospheric air. Now when you have a look at the third image, the stop cock is horizontal which means that it is off to atmospheric air. Now attach the setup to the patient arterial line. Now once it's attached, we can see a clear waveform in the monitor. In this image, the line which is red in color shows the arterial line waves. Next comes square wave test. It is otherwise known as dynamic response testing. The reason why square wave test is done is, the arterial line can measure BP inaccurately unless properly calibrated. Rapidly flushing the line generates a square wave. Now this image shows how rapid flushing is done. Once rapid flushing is done, it generates square wave and oscillations. Counting oscillations after the square wave indicates if the arterial line is working properly. And this is performed once in a shift to enhance accuracy. If the square waves or oscillations vary, they may identify problems such as air bubbles, kinking in the tubing, loose connections or catheter patency. By looking at this image, you have a clear understanding about the square wave test. The first waves are the regular arterial waveforms. Now next, while performing square wave test during rapid flushing, we can see the appearance of square wave followed by two oscillations, which is followed by the wave with dichrotic notch. Now, there are three responses while performing a square wave test that is adequately damped, over damped and under damped. What we have seen previously is the adequately damped that is two oscillations that follow the fast flush wave, a clear arterial waveform with dichrotic notch. In over damped there is sluggish or no oscillation with the fast flush absence of dichrotic notch and falsely low systolic blood pressure and high diastolic blood pressure. In under damped, there are more than two oscillations with a fast flush, additional artifactual spikes and falsely high systolic blood pressure and low diastolic blood pressure. In case of over damped or under damped, check the tubing for bubbles 
blood clots, kinks, loose connections or decrease the length of tubing. Next, complications of arterial catheterization. Pain, hemorrhage, hematoma, thrombosis, proximal or distal embolization, arterial insufficiency, infection. Now, here comes assessment and monitoring of arterial line. Check if the pressure bag is inflated adequately and as we discussed before, it should be inflated to 300 mm Hg. Check the lines for bubbles, blood clots and loose connections. If bubbles are present, withdraw the air bubble with a syringe before flushing to prevent air embolism. Check the condition of the dressing. Change the dressing when it becomes loose, moist or soiled. Cleanse area with CHG, allow to air dry and apply sterile dressing. Check the site for any complications. Check the position of the transducer kit. As we discussed before, it should be positioned at the level of phlebostatic axis. Check the waveform and blood return to assure catheter patency. Check the arterial pressure monitor alarms. And the alarms should be always on. Zeroing and square wave test performed once in a shift to ensure accuracy of the set. Last but not the least, never inject or infuse anything into the arterial line besides the flushing solution and don't flush the line if you see air bubbles in it. So this is all about the arterial line and nursing responsibilities. If you find this video useful, please like it and please subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.